Hey, it's Olay, and this is episode 13 of the Red Pilled Orange Pill Investor. And today, um, I had a I had a fun conversation in the sauna after the after the workout. There was a uh, a guy talking about some data centers being put up in Jersey or something, and um, and mentioned that maybe they were Bitcoin mining and or Maybe that was a different job. I could be getting mixed up. But as soon as I heard Bitcoin, of course, my my eyes lit up and I was I was ready to pounce. Anytime I I don't have to make an excuse for myself to talk about Bitcoin and somebody else brings it up first, I'm a happy man. So uh, we talked about it a little bit and uh, and he said, well, I don't have Bitcoin, but I have something DSO or something. And he's like, do you know anything about that? And I said, well, is it depends if it's proof of, proof of stake or proof of work. And he said, proof of stake. And I said, well, I'm pretty sure that 90% of everything that isn't Bitcoin is a scam. And if it's proof of stake, I'm almost certain of it. <laughs> you know, I was like, I don't think you want to hear what I have to say, but that's my opinion. And, um, and his first response was, uh, you know, it could have been much worse, but <laughs> it was like, hey, you know, but I've, Forex my money on it in a year, or, you know, whatever time frame it was, it was great. And I and I was like, yeah, that's that's awesome. I said, you know, it's not that you can't make money off of it. Um, I mean, the people who are promoting scams are are doing it to make money. So if you can time it just right and and get in and get out before they pull the rug or before its value relative to Bitcoin evaporates, then uh, sure, you can make some money. And I used to trade everything. So I had accounts on Binance, Bittrex, uh, God, what was the other one? <laughs> I had accounts on exchanges I don't even remember anymore, but traded, you know, Bitcoin was the, the big dog, of course, but then if Bitcoin the value of Bitcoin went up and the value of Ethereum went down, I'd be like, oh, okay, well, I can just trade some Bitcoin for more Ethereum. And then later when it flips, it'll go the other direction. You know, I'll do the opposite. <clears throat> that trade did not work out. Um, so traded Ethereum, traded Ripple, traded, was it IOTA, traded Cardano, traded, shit, you probably never heard of, Raiden, uh, Bankera, anything on the exchange that if it looked on the chart like it had broken below support and, you know, could come back at some point, I would just trade it. And then if it traded back up, I'd try to sell it high, you know, whatnot. Um, so I used to be a crypto trader and I still invest long term, but with a Lightly Trader philosophy, which is selling covered call weekly. And, um, but I really, I don't really mess around with, with altcoins anymore or shit coins, as, uh, as you could call them. And even though I, it seems like we're headed for another bull market and you could potentially make more money with some of these altcoins, Oh, you know, during this next bull market, then Bitcoin, there's just, for me, not enough reason to risk it. So there's a certain amount of risk with Bitcoin, but I think it's minimal at this point. Most of the existential threats to Bitcoin are, uh, you know, the same, the same existential threats to humanity. Like if there's a society extinction level event or something and we get bombed back to the stone ages or something worse than the uh, Ebola virus clears out 90% of the population or something. Something like that happens. Um, we'll probably have more things to worry about than Bitcoin. But at the same time, if there's even a few computers running, Bitcoin will keep plugging along and then if society ever gets back to Technological level, well, if somebody's got the keys to their coins, I guess they'll have the 
the best money ever invented or created. Um, so I, I do wish that guy well, though. I hope his coins moon and I hope he gets a Lambo or whatever. And, um, but I, I don't think that anything that's proof of stake, I, I think it's extremely unlikely that it would be a legit coin. And even if they have good intentions, it's, I would say it's almost certainly going to be uh, deemed an unregistered security with the SEC. So once they have to start filing and everybody realizes, oh, this person was pre-mined this much coins and this went here and this is how much we're paying for this person over here, the uh, <clears throat> we'll be able to see, you know, behind the curtain and we'll be able to flush out most of the scams. So though I don't really support the government in most cases, it would be nice if the SEC could just come in and flush out a lot of these scam coins. Um, however, uh, one of the guys asked me, he's like, well, you know, what, what would you do to make some money you know, and I said, well, since you asked, <laughs> um, you know, Riot is a Bitcoin mining stock. And he's like, oh, I actually own Riot. And I said, well, if you, if you uh, buy 100 shares and sell the covered call against it, you can get paid 50 bucks and then you can buy four more shares of it. And then next week you can do it again and do it again or, you know, and he said, oh, I don't know, I might take too long to figure that out. Or um, So I directed him to In the Money's channel. Uh, he's got a really good video about covered calls. He's actually got two or three other excellent options basics. He goes over everything, intrinsic value, extrinsic value, call value, um, and on one of his, I think it, it's either on the, it's either on the covered call one, or he has one on the wheel as well. But he, I think he has a Google Docs version, and I used to, I think there was an Excel version as well that I used to have. He actually has a nice spreadsheet where you can, you can put in, okay, this is what I paid for it. I sold a covered call. Now my, you know, if I bought this for 1100 and sold it for 50 now my cost basis is 1050 And then you can just keep track of every single thing. And, and, you know, after a couple of months, maybe you bought your shares for 800 bucks, And you're selling cover calls at whatever. And um, so that's a nice, valuable tool. But, you know, I basically just explained to him that there's there's not a whole lot of steps to it. And, um, you know, selling the 12 for 5% is probably a little too greedy. Maybe the 13. Buy two shares. I sold the 14. I think I got 22 cents because now this is after hours on a Saturday. <clears throat> but you could buy almost two shares with that. So, you know, one share. I think as long as you're getting 1%, it's pretty reasonable. Um, and then you just keep doing it. And eventually, if the price goes above your strike price and you're forced to either sell off those shares or buy the call back, then you got a decision to make. I mean, if this goes to 50 and you don't want to pay $3,700, then you just let your shares be sold off. Um, he was worried about infinite risk, and I explained to him that once you own, you know, when you own a hundred a hundred shares, and the price goes to the moon, you don't have to go out to the market to buy them. You just hand over your shares at the agreed upon price, and you're fine. There's no, it's no big deal. So that's 
what to do. And uh, he said, it's, well, it sounds too good to be true. And I said, well, it, you know, it would be. Um, so, yeah, it's not hard. You, you, can, you can pick anything above this strike price. I mean, if you think the price is going down for some reason, I mean, you could pick prices down here. <laughs> I, I don't think that makes much sense. Um, I prefer to leave a little bit of upside in in my trades, but uh, you know I explained to him that it it would be too good to be true, except there is a trade off. So while I enjoy this strategy, you are giving up upside. So I'm giving up all of the upside above fourteen dollars this week. If the price goes to fifteen or fifty, I'm only going to profit from eleven thirty eight to 1400 that's all that that's the most I can make I can make two hundred and sixty two dollars plus the 22 this was 22 cents I think when I made the trade so it's it's trading maximum upside for some upfront profits I'd like to think of it as just consistently taking profits. Uh, you're supposed to buy low and sell high. Well, if you pick a strike above your your purchase price, you are guaranteed to sell high. It, it's impossible to sell low. Um, and the other question he had was, well, you're assuming that the price is going to go up. And I said, no, actually the opposite. My assumption is that the price could just stay 1138. So if the price stays 1138 for the next 52 weeks, I'm just going to sell a covered call for 22 cents a week, and every week I'm going to buy two shares, and after 52 weeks I'm going to have another 104 shares, and then I'll start selling two of these. And then it won't take 52 weeks to get another 100 shares. It's only going to take 26 weeks. Well, combine four week 25, I suppose. And the next 100 shares won't take 25 weeks because I'll be buying, I'll have 300 shares and I'll be buying six a week. And 100 divided by six is what, 14 ish, something like that whatever the hell it is. And eventually the ultimate goal, the way that I like to think about it, is you continue to do that until you, and then in one video before I even did this series, I had a whole ass spreadsheet for that. But if you got 10,000 shares and you sell covered calls and you're collecting a percent that's going to give you enough money to buy another 100 shares. So once you get 10,000 shares of something, you can purchase an additional 100 shares every week. And if you purchase an additional 100 shares every week, then you can sell 101 shares. And then 100, excuse me, you can sell 101 covered calls. And then next week you can sell 102 covered calls. And then next week 103 calls. So that's when, um, that's when your returns change from additive to these how it sound like I'm I don't know if it's exponential or multiplicative, whatever the fuck the the right word is. But you know, if you're getting one percent a week for fifty two weeks, then you're basically getting one percent profit or excuse me, fifty two percent profit a year. Which is a nice return. If you have 10,000 shares and you're getting 1% a week, but you're getting 1% on your 1%, now the, the, the formula changes. It's not just 1% times 52, it's 1.01 .01 to the expo exponent of 52. So you're gonna do 1.01 .01 52 times, which would give you 67% Actually, I'm at 167%. No, sorry, 
So you're going to, the one is what you started out with, and then the 67% would be the profit. And it's, you know, I got 2% on this riot. So if I get 2% a week, then I should, I should double my money by the end of the year. But if I had 10,000 shares of Riot and I was getting 1.02 a week, if it's two weeks, now you're almost 3xing your money in a year. And that's why I don't, I don't really like to track my profit. I mean, of course, I look at the number. So, you know, if I cashed out, what would the number be? But I prefer to look at at the number of shares I own, and I want that always to be going up. And I don't have to put any extra money in here. I mean, you can, you, you probably, you know, the more you put in to anything, the better. However, if you can only come up with enough for 100 shares of something, you should still be able to execute something like this and if the price of riot goes up to 50 and you get priced out of it and you have to you lose your 100 shares and i mean then the breaks you got to go back out to the market and find something cheaper you know i don't like the liquidity on hut but it's a couple bucks cheaper um and who knows i mean there could be other companies going public all the time i try not to buy to really mess with much that's too too far under ten dollars a share and, and let me just show you why so there was uh what was that old weed stock um oh, can i find it i just cannabis okay Let's see what ACB and Tilray are. Oh yeah, forty-five cents. Okay, so I think this used to be like ten bucks, ten bucks a share or more. Okay, oh, God, it was a hundred. I think I was trading it when it was right here. Fourteen, ten, whatever. So let's take a look at the options. See if they even have weekly options. Yep. So, so here's what happens if you try to pick something that's too small. There's no premium to be had here. You, you can't even get, you know, if, if you just can only afford 100 shares of something that's 45 cents a share, there's no premium. You could try to go out 45 to 50 days. Okay. So you can get, <laughs> not the worst thing in the world, honestly. Well, I mean, if you're just straight broke, I suppose you could do this. But, I mean, these companies can all just go out of business. I, I, I'm not a financial advisor. I can't give financial advice anyway, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't touch something like this unless it was just as an educational tool. And I just was like, you know what? I just want to practice. So you could – it would just be really hard. I, you know – I've traded some things that were in the two or three dollar range, and then they'll crash to below a dollar, and you can't get, you can't get anything down here. So that's what you have to be careful with. You you, you got to trade something that's decent. And so I I you know I'm a believer in Tesla and Bitcoin, so that's what I gravitate towards. Now, any of these mining stocks could go out of business if they don't if they don't plan for the future and there's a bear market and they paid a shitload of money for all these miners and they can't pay the electric bill. You know, these things could go out of business. And that's that's an extra risk compared to Bitcoin. Um, you know, I, I forgot to tell the guy, but, you know, when he was saying, oh, I don't know, it seems like a lot to do and I don't want to have to learn how to do it and, you know, learn a new thing and watch a bunch of videos or whatever. And I forgot to tell them, well, the answer then is just buy some Bitcoin and hold it for five years. <laughs> That's, um, I think I saw a stat. It, I could go through the chart and see if it's true or not. It, I would assume it has because it seems like the, the, the cycles are about four years. 
So they said that no one who's ever bought Bitcoin has lost money if they held it for five years. So that's that's what I would do. Buy some Tesla or some Bitcoin. If I just didn't want to do anything at all, I would just buy it and then I would just sit on it for five years, ten years. That actually, if everything works out with the with the stock to flow model, uh, which is the, uh, the model that Plan B either came up with it or I don't know if he came up with it or discovered it from someone else. I think he, I think it's his model. Um, he covers some of the other models as well, and they all fairly jive fairly well. But if that model holds true for the next bull market, then just buying Bitcoin would be probably the superior strategy than what I'm doing. But m what I'm doing is not about hoping it's going to be the, the superior strategy. I am selling covered calls so that I am reducing my cost basis every week, which gives me a higher chance of success. So if Bitcoin goes up 10x and I only realize 5x or 6x or 7 or 8 or 9 because I have limited some of my upside, that's completely fine with me. I would rather... I would rather do this and if Bitcoin trades sideways or you know or Tesla if if they trade sideways for the next 2 years and the price doesn't change I'm going to be buying shares every week and I'm going to have hundreds more shares than someone who just bought and held so it's not a it, it it's it's not a foregone conclusion that you can just buy and hold and you know magic happens i'm i am a you know a, a firm believer in tesla and bitcoin so i think you're probably okay with that strategy but yeah and hell i just enjoy the trading i i enjoy being in the market and you know scrolling through the the options chain and trying to figure out, you know, should I should I go up here to the 225, collect about 1% and buy one share? Or, I mean, hell, you can, let's see, the difference between 219 and 225, I think the price shifted a bit. But anyway, that only gives you about, 2% call away value and 1% premium. So I prefer the mining stocks to Tesla at this point. However, they have an earnings call coming up and I'm I'm always going to assume that there's a greater risk of Tesla on, you know, surprising to the upside than to the downside. Whether that assumption is rational or not, I'm not sure. But if I think they're going to text 10x in the next five years or whatever, then it has to happen at some point. It's either got to be during earnings calls or whatever, battery day or investor day or when they release the, the unit sales or when they release something. And then... So I generally don't hold cover calls over earnings days just in case it, it gaps up. I want to capture 100% of that upside. Um, but, you know, so right now, Tesla is not like delivering all like amazing premium. However, you know, if you really think it's going to go, you know, gap up, you can you can take safer bets. And this will only get you half a share of Tesla, but you sell a 230 this week and you sell a 230 next week. Okay, it takes you two weeks to get an extra share of Tesla. If you if you're a bigger believer bigger believer in Tesla, then you know do that. 
I think it's a slower way to accumulate shares, but it's it's viable. It's still reducing your cost basis every week and adding extra shares. And so, and that's the other part of it too. So you add an extra share this week. Even if the price goes above 225 by Friday, you're, you have limited upside on 100 shares, but you have infinite upside on the extra share. So you're still long one share. And then, you know, four weeks from now, you're long, even if all 100 shares get called away, you're still long four shares. It's, uh, I think it's a pretty, pretty easy strategy to follow. 500 shares, sell a covered call for next week, above the current, you know, above the current price, collect some premium, buy some more shares, rinse and repeat every week until the price goes so far above your strike price that you just can't afford to buy it back. And if you have accumulated 10 shares, and the price goes above your strike, I mean, you can just sell those shares to buy it back. And, you know, now you've got, you know, now you've got shares that are worth 230 and you paid 220 for them. So I think I rambled longer than I needed to for this one. But uh, maybe I'll start a Sun Investment Club or something. We end up either talking about nutrition, exercise, football, or when I can trick them into it, Bitcoin and Tesla. All right, y'all. Be good.